Okay, so I'm back out in the studio uh, slash, uh, slash swelteringly hot garage working, uh, laying out the images or laying out the image of King Femme. King Femme is a, a drag artist out of Miami and I just love, I saw this image on Instagram, on their Instagram page and I had to paint it. I asked, I've gotten permission and um, King Fem has been very generous with me and very kind. So I started that. I know it's been a few weeks, I think, since I made my last video. Um, you know, life. And not being able to paint full time has kind of kept me from doing the work. And speaking of which, I actually went on Facebook today and I was um, just expressing how, how sad I am that I can't paint full time. And embarrassed too, because honestly, at this stage of the game, I should be able to afford to do this all the time. Um, I I have repeatedly gotten accolades. My work has literally been shown all around the world, and uh, for some reason, that level of success keeps evading me. And so I get, sorry, I get distracted. But I get, I get very, 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 very discouraged, very down. The voices in my head are constantly, you know, why are you such a failure? Why don't you quit? Why don't you quit painting? Um, you really should stop. It's ridiculous. You're just making stuff that's going to take up room in the world. And then um, the other voice in my head says, this is your life purpose, and you were sent here to paint, to create for a reason, you can't stop. Then the other one kind of takes over and I get really depressed and end up sitting in my computer for several hours on my day off, unable to work. But we're trying not to do that today. I made out my list of things to do. Get a haircut, boink. Go to the grocery store, done. Um, wash Bugsy, wash the bathroom floor, wash the kitchen floor, that kind of thing. I've gotten everything done, and I was doing something that I never would have thought I would have done a few years ago, and I have to be honest, because now I do it more often than not. Several years ago, I couldn't have imagined me giving me permission and excuses to not paint. I was on such a trajectory. I was working all the time, or working at nine to five jobs, but working on my artwork and showing all the time and meeting the most magnificent people who would drive, oh, there goes the image again, um, on my iPad, sorry, it just disappeared, who would drive three, five, eight hours to meet me. Um, I've had people plan entire vacations around going to a show I'm doing. And since I've moved to Florida, that hasn't happened. And it's not about ego. It's about giving me the motivation to just keep working because I know I'm headed in a direction. I'm headed in a really good, strong, positive direction. I've had more opportunity. I've had really good opportunities that most people can only ever dream of. Most of them have fallen apart. Some have not. Um, like I'm here, I have work here in, sorry, I'm sweating like crazy. Um, I have work here in Sarasota at Chasing Galleries. I have work down in Miami still with Blue Egg. Jay is very good to me. Um, they both are. I have work in Providence, Rhode Island. I have work in Newark, New Jersey, and I still have work in New York. Thank you very much. I've had, I've been in shows in Brussels. I've had work in Israel, or I still have work in Israel. It's just like, this magnificent stuff. And when I say it, I still can't believe that, I, that any of it has happened to me. But I moved to Florida two and a half years ago. And here we are. Um, like I said, I have work here in, in, in Sarasota, but I can't do show after show after show. This isn't a community where that kind of thing happens, really. You have to be someone, not just in the know, but in the in the know, and you have to be one of those very special people. It's just a bizarre place, and I, I can't say I love it. 
Um, I'm very lucky to live where I live. I'm very lucky to have the nine to five job that I have now uh, because uh, they've helped to uh, bring me back out of my shell and away from, ang uh, away from a lot of PTSD stuff that was going on. And they helped me through the shit that went on here with my ex-housemate and the, the, the absolute bullshit that he pulled. Um, I, I really don't know where I'd be without my, my job, my current job. They Unbelievable people and really great bosses. So anyway, I'm out in the garage. And today I put it on my list of things to do, to, on my to-do list that I would work on this portrait. And that's what I'm doing. I'm going to work on it. I'm going to stick to the plan. I've had so many people message me or friend me and, and talk to me through Facebook or Instagram and say, I live in the middle of nowhere. I can't show. And I'm like, make a show. Just like build a show. Pull people together. And over the past two and a half years, I've understood what it's like to live in that environment where it's really not possible. It's just not possible. Right here, it's not that there's no people. There's a ton of people that come to Sarasota. The whole world comes to Sarasota. But it is so incredibly expensive that you can't just rent a space and put together a show. And the art community, to me, has seemed and been so fragmented and so worried about, you know, individual the individual artists having to worry about how they're going to make it through the day, that there's no, no real place for people to come together. It's a very rich town, and it's sad. And But now I, I, I completely and utterly get it. I've lived in neighborhoods that didn't have this source of revenue. I mean, there's money coming in. And we've had phenomenal shows with hundreds of people show up and people buying art and just excited. Here, this money. Great place to go shopping at a box store and take a nap. That's where we are. But I'm going to keep, I, I wrote out that to-do list and I'm sticking to it so I don't fall into that pit of depression and sadness that I have been experiencing for so long. We're sticking to the plan. We're painting King Femme. Even though it's like 110 degrees out here, we're going to stick to the plan. Hey, I did want to mention something that's big. Besides, yeah, I get it. I know what it's like to live in a cultural desert now. With a, this place has a focus on 50, 60 years ago, but whatever. I lost like 30, 35 pounds. I don't know if anybody's noticed. These, I used to fill out these pants. This, this was my, one of my dress-up shirts because it actually fit me. And um, I, got a, I got a look at the behind in, in a mirror today when I was getting my hair cut. And I went, what is going on with my pants? I've got them pulled in, cinched in as far as they will go. So I'm smaller than I was when I left Providence and hit Virginia. Um, I'm several pounds smaller. But I'm kind of excited. Everything is big on me. I am mistaken for a homeless person a lot. But whatever, dude. I don't care. Um, <laughs> whatever. Sorry, I'm not wearing your shiny shoes or shiny shoes like you. I'm just me. Just me trying to make it through the day. Anyway, I have no big positive message, except I managed to stick to this task and lose a ton of weight. Like 15 more to go, and I will be on. A, uh, I will have hit a, a goal I set for myself years ago. Once I hit 50 pounds, the last 50 pounds, I will have finally reached a goal I have been hoping to reach for a. Let me see, for about seven years. Um, so fingers crossed. I think I'm going there. Eating a lot of tofu and salad, and using my uh, Ninja bl uh, blender as much as possible. But now I'm going to try and stick to this goal again. Uh, not just paint this portrait of King Femme, but also try and find a way to show, 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 show again. And make myself, I can't make myself relevant in this city. Nobody can. Um, you know, not unless you're Creighton Barrel or Pier 1. But um, 
It's, it's just astounding. But anyway, uh, uh, maybe Miami, you know, maybe I'm going to get ready for wherever I end up next. I'll get my painting, a new painting brochure in place and just start preparing myself for what's coming next. And we'll just see. We'll just see what happens. Right now I'm listening to a TED Talk, and where's my phone? Because I want to share this with you. I was listening to Brene Brown's um, new special on Netflix, her talk on Netflix, and that was moderately helpful, although I find her penchant to just, penchant to just, you know, be joyful, way out of my range. That's just, no, that's, no, no. <laughs> Let's just be happy with the moment, Brene, and calm down. And uh, But I'm listening to Moving Forward on NPR. It's a TED Talk right now. Whoop, I guess you can't read it. It's Moving Forward anyway. I'm listening to that to help me get through the next few hours while I work on this, stick to the plan. Then we pop Bugsy on the scooter and go for a ride. And that's kind of it. No news, really. Just saying howdy doody. Hope you're all hanging in there and um, see what happens. All right? Ciao.